Okay, you can come on up if you want. There's a lot of people that count. And the rest of you say, thank you for not choosing me. Okay, she, he's gonna come help you up, but whoops. I understand that, but come on up. Okay, you're right-handed and left-handed. I'm gonna have you stand over here, and I'm gonna go over here. And actually, I'm gonna just, you stand here, face them, put your right hand out, no, your right hand, hand ar your arm out like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to help you out. You have feather on you. She's got feathers on her, it's pretty cool. And she, yeah, okay. So now, yeah, when I put that in your hand, you start it. I watched the video. See, they're like, oh, y'all watched the video. Okay, which is good. I love it. In all the years of doing this, I've never had a response like y'all. I'm very proud of you, yes. Any excuse to take it down. <laughs> she knows what's coming, another 15 minutes. Okay, but see, what happens is, you know, and I'll go briefly through this because you obviously you've seen it on the video. This is just a little, I think 16 ounces of water. Very light, no problem. But after you carry this for 15 minutes, it gets really heavy. And your husband weighs more than that. She's already crying. Okay, there you go, just in case. Yes, you can do this. I know you can. And so your children, how many children? Four. Four, I got four also. My husband has four, so eight is enough. Eight grandchildren, not enough, but I'm only at seven. And so your children are heavier than that bottle. Yes. And you've been carrying your children for years. Yes. And even you've seen me on video, but you're still carrying them. Yes. yes. It's just repentance up here. She's admitting, okay? And so it's very important who, who actually choose, and God really highlights who I'm supposed to choose. And, and the thing is, it's like, you've carried the weight of your husband here, weight of your children here, grandchildren, the, 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 those that are the in-laws married to your children, and then you're dealing with that, and then you're dealing with finances, and then you're dealing with a pandemic, and then you're dealing with fear, for all of them, because that's your job to carry the weight of it. That's what you think, as every good mom would think, okay? That's just very normal and natural. Not biblical, but normal and natural. So understand what God wants to do. He says, I want you to give me all your cares, give me all your, he's got scriptures out the wazoo in the Bible. And he kept listing them and listing them and listing them and listing them because we didn't get it. In this book, that book, another book. It's like, just let go. Let me do it. And so often, so often, people, God says, if you'll just give it to me. If you just give it to me. Ugh. And you know what God says? Keep it. You think you can do better than me? But that's what we're telling God. That we can fix our children, we can fix our spouse better than he can. But if you just give it to him. <sighs> and you've been carrying him for years and this is only five minutes. You get, you earned that. Yes. Amen.
And just, just re everybody, just repeat. Father and a husband or a wife, you know which one you are married to. <clears throat> Father, Father, I can't fix my husband. God, you know I've tried. Try and try and try and try. Men are smarter because they give up on the wives in the first two weeks. <laughs> Women will die trying. It's part of our God-given thing, okay? I can't fix them. I lay them on the altar. I give them to you. Show me what I need to do. And Father, bless them. Because see, nothing ever alters until you put it on the altar. And you name a child, you know, Father, I can't fix Abigail. I've tried, but I can't. So I lay her on your altar. I give her to you. Father, I ask you to send people to minister to her. And I'm going to be a mom. I'm not going to be a preacher. Because my children don't need Joan Hunter. They need the Jesus. They, they need mom. They need grandma. Okay? So I just want to encourage you. Let God send other people to him to preach. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I went over to Arizona to take one of my daughters to, the, to take her to the doctor and uh, go with her for her last doctor's visit uh, on chemo and everything like that. And, and then there had been no cancer. It was just, it was very miraculous. So we got there a little early. We go out to eat and I'm sitting, we're sitting in this first booth. I'm facing that way. She's facing that way. Empty booth here and a booth filled with two men on one side and one younger man on the other side. The two older men had a hard time hearing. And he was there to give him a Bible study. <laughs> I'm doing this for your sake. And now we're going to turn to Acts 3.21 in the restaurant. I don't even know if there's an Acts, you know, whatever. I just said that. And he was teaching on healing. And, you know, my daughter is going to get the word into her one way or another, even if it's a restaurant. So we sat through the whole Bible study. <laughs> and I didn't have to say a word. She goes, Mom, do you hear what they're talking about? What are they talking about? They're talking about healing. I'm like, I know. She goes, hey, my mom's a healing evangelist. I want, where did that come from? <laughs> oh, that was pretty fun. God's going to get the word into our children. It's not our job to cram it down their throat. Because when they get older and you start teaching them and talking about Jesus, they're going to throw it up and get mad at you. And it's going to cause them to rebel most of the time. Okay? So you just be Jesus to them. Okay? I can't fix my finances. I lay them on your altar. I release them to you. I give them to you. Father, give me greater wisdom on how to handle that in Jesus' name.